very pleased to welcome to the program Dolph Vandenbrink, CEO of Heineken. Sir, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. So today's results, they've come in ahead of analyst expectations, but you've given a, a bit of a cautious outlook when it comes to margins for the rest of the year. Give us some more detail around the types of pressure that you're experiencing now that's given you um, a reason to give that cautious outlook. Good morning, and uh, thanks for, uh, for having me. Yes, as you said, we uh, are very proud of the strong results in the first half of, uh, of the year. Almost 10% beer growth, 14% revenue growth, doubling our operating uh, profit. Does it happen that often in a career that you can say that? So uh, we'll, we'll take it, uh, uh, as it, uh, as it is there. Uh, propelled by sequential improvement across regions, in particular our Americas region and the Africa Middle East uh, region, very strong with 16-70% uh, growth. Brent Heineken continues to have a lot of momentum, 20% growth, double digit in over 50 of our operating uh, companies. So indeed a strong first half of the year. Now at the same time, as we have done since the outset of the pandemic, we remain cautious. Um, uh, we have expected volatility along the way, and we expect volatility to last. It's uh, all the time. It's in a different place uh, across uh, the globe, uh, where we see uh, regions like uh, Africa, Middle East, uh, South America really turning a corner. In the second quarter, Europe turned a quarter, uh, uh, turned a corner, and we had still almost 10% uh, decline in the first quarter, 13% growth in Europe in the second quarter. Now. Of concern is indeed uh, Asia, and in particular Southeast Asia. Uh, the impact of the virus was relatively benign, benign last year, but right now we see uh, much more impact, and in particular in a very important market uh, like Vietnam, where they still have a relative low vaccination rate and the Delta virus having an impact. And that makes us cautious in our outlook over the next few months in, in Vietnam and some of these other Southeast Asian markets. But overall, we feel much better now than we did uh, a year ago. And when it comes to the cautiousness in those markets you highlighted, is it from a demand perspective because of the COVID situation or is it more on the cost side of things? No, so when it comes to the pandemic, it's really the impact uh, on demand. And right now we are facing lockdowns in parts of Vietnam, uh, the very important uh, market of Ho Chi Minh City, where uh, large parts uh, of the market are shut down, the Mekong Delta. Um, uh, for example, in Malaysia, our brewery is, uh, is uh, shut down by, uh, by the government as part of the uh, COVID uh, measure, measure. So Southeast Asia is very much driven by, uh, by demand restrictions due to the, to the virus. Uh, now, and indeed, you're alluding to a second part of, uh, of our outlook where we see an acceleration in input cost impact, commodity pricing. It's much publicized up on. This will mostly impact us uh, next year as uh, a lot of our positions for the remainder of the year are hatched. Uh, but we are, as we have announced uh, late last year, uh, we do see a lot of transactional effects impacting us also very strongly in the second half of the year. Now, there's also another reason that with lockdowns all over Europe in the first half, we were cautious on our marketing and selling expenses in the first half, and we do see an acceleration of our marketing and selling in the second half for good reasons. Now, those effects combined make that we're a bit cautious on our margin outlook in the second half. Yeah, that, that's fascinating, that margin story. I'm just interested, given, given the price spike that we've seen in food prices, what you're now seeing in terms of grain prices for brewing? Yeah, across, it's not just the grains, uh, Jeff. It is across almost any commodity type. You see double digit uh, in increases in the spot uh, prices. It's, it's in uh, road transportation, it's in ocean freight, it's in an aluminium, it's in plastic, it's in sugar. In, you know, no matter the commodity type, and there's very fast uh, inflation happening. Now, of course, that top line spot price inflation is not per se, you know, uh, the direct impact to us due to our hedge positions, due to our long term 
contracts with uh, suppliers, we are able to somewhat mitigate it. But the extent of the commodity price inflation will impact us and it will particularly impact us next year. I think not different from what you're seeing from other FMCG firms. Now, cost mitigation, very important. This was anyway a big priority of our evergreen uh, um, um, uh, transformation. Um, where we launched a big organizational redesign earlier in the year that is advancing well. We have locked in almost half of the benefit that we set out at the beginning. Uh, but we also need to be very attentive to pricing. Now, we had about 5.5% revenue per hectoliter increase in the first half. That's strong, particularly driven by the Americas region and the Africa Middle East region with almost 10% um, increase in our uh, price mix. Um, and we will have to remain even more vigilant on pricing the second half and going into next year. Can I ask you about sponsorship more broadly, Dolph? I mean, what benefit do you think um, the uh, Euros brought to the business? I know you've extended that sponsorship arrangement, but what was the uplift, do you think, from that spending, given that you are now committing to further marketing spend going forward? Yeah, no, and I know you're a big sports uh, lover, uh, Joff. No, it was amazing. And the Euro 2020, it coincided right with the moment where all across Europe, the on-trade was reopening. It was just amazing to see tens of thousands of people visiting the stadiums again, enjoying the sports, people at home watching the games and, and enjoying it, people in bars and restaurants. So it, uh, I have to say June, uh, felt very, very different. Very proud of uh, Heineken being one of the lead sponsors of the tournament. Um, it had one of the highest viewerships in the history of the Euro Cup. Um, so, yes, we do believe strongly in sponsorships. You know us with Formula One racing. You know us with uh, the Champions League, but now also with the Euro uh, Championship. And you can count on us uh, to keep leaning in. Uh, and indeed, in the second half of the year, we will continue to, uh, to ramp up our investment behind our brands, uh, leveraging these sponsorship platforms. Mm. Uh, Dolph, just to wrap it all up and, and put it together, we are now getting to see the uh, changes in consumer behavior as uh, economies lift restrictions, especially advanced economies. How have consumption patterns changed as those advanced economies have reopened? And what kind of uh, changes do you expect to be long lasting? Yeah, uh, we see a lot of momentum in the off-trade, the supermarket grocery uh, channel. If we look to the second quarter in Europe, we saw the on-trade, the horeca business starting to come back, but still with elevated levels in the off-trade. So maybe people found new occasions of beer consumption at and near homes. Uh, and we'll have to see how, to what extent that will uh, last, but we are optimistic uh, about that. A question is to what extent the on-trade will fully recover. You see different patterns depending on where you are in, uh, in the world. Ultimately, we believe uh, it's a human universal desire to socialize, you know, over a beer in a bar or restaurant. So long term, it will come back. Um, and of course, we see digitization accelerating. Uh, we see our own business to consumer platform, Beer Wolf in Europe, growing once again with 60% its uh, revenue, its orders, the number of unique consumers. We see our uh, digital B2B platform uh, locking in a billion in revenue, which is double the rate of, uh, of last year. And, and that's only going to continue. And the pandemic has been a huge catalyst and accelerator for, uh, for this trend. We've got to say goodbye, Dolph, but uh, always nice to catch up with you. Thanks for, so much for joining us this morning. Dolph Vandenbrink, the CEO of Heineken.